sports world. What a day. Super Bowl media day. It was a madhouse at the U.S. Airways Center. I mean, fans were there because this is the first time they actually opened up Super Bowl media day to fans. Fans could come in and watch. And right. then, of course, you have media from all over the world. You had a guy in there, like in a big barrel. He was called Barrel Boy. <laughs> uh, I actually took a peek inside. You want to know what was in the barrel. But uh, all kinds of interesting stuff and interesting people out there. I heard there were like 5,000 media credentialed for this event. And there were about 15,000 people that somehow got in there. I don't know what happened. It was like... 15,000 media? No, I'm just kidding. It, <laughs> it felt, like, felt more, like it. I felt mean, like it was more just, than 5,000. Yeah, it was uh, absolutely uh, unbelievable. Crazy stuff. And everybody's, you know, jostling for position, trying to get to the, to the players. And, of course, you know, the marquee players like Gronkowski and Russell Wilson and Richard Sherman and... You know, all those guys had big, you know, crowds around them. But it was fun. It was interesting. And like I said, there was a. I remember back in 2008 when when the Giants and the uh, Patriots played here, and we went to meet a day. And there were a lot of freaks out there. I mean, you saw <laughs> a, a girl was in a wedding dress. Some other guy was in a clown suit. And you had a couple people like that. Like I mentioned, the barrel boy. You had one guy with like shoulder pads and a helmet. You had like GoPros on every you know angle and stuff. So it was pretty interesting. And then of course, Marshawn Lynch is now making a lot of headlines trending right now uh, because he just got up there for like about four or five minutes and just kept saying the same thing i'm just here so i don't get fined i'm just here so i don't get fined and he waited and he said time's you think up probably get fined for saying that i wonder you know it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with him but uh yeah it was uh it was a madhouse and uh it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to be there. And, you know, the cool thing is, like I mentioned, the fans could go and watch. And they had a, a little goodie bag for the oh, fans. Oh, show me. I brought it. Look, I got to see. Oh, oh, now it's hooked on my chair. But, yeah, they had a little goodie bag here. And it was pretty neat because it, it actually came. Can I like, open it? Absolutely. I don't even know what's in there. So open so it. You're over it. This is it. Oh, wow. This is it. Drum roll. Let's check what we have in there. I know they had an earpiece where fans could tune into a specific channel. Crispy fries by oh, Ruffles. This is cool. Yeah. Okay, so what else they're is in like, there? Those, that's my gift to you. You can have them. Okay. I know you, you, know, you, know. I, you normally do like uh, fries, but I'm recovering from a oh. sickness. So I don't know <laughs> if I should be eating fries. What's this? Oil spi ice, Old Spice Refreshed Body Spray Timber. Pretty sure this is for guys, so I'm not yeah. going to take this from you. <laughs> I'll use this. You know. uh, we have Nationwide Official Sponsor of the NFL. What is you? Okay. It's something Velcro. I don't, I don't really know. know how you use this. There's Velcro you wrap it around your drink, maybe? Velcro. Yeah, I would think so, but it's too it's thin. It's a small no. drink. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, like a... I don't I have no idea. Beer, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Because it's from Nationwide. I don't really... I don't know. Let's see. Live sports radio, FM see, dual skin. Oh. That was the thing that all these fans had an earpiece on, and they were saying, okay, Russell Wilson's on Channel 1, uh, you know, uh, Richard Sherman's on Channel 2, Marshall Lynch, and you could tune into the channel, and you could hear... What each guy was saying, so that was a pretty cool thing. You saw That's fans cool. had that on their, on their ears. Does it come with head, uh, headphones? No, it wraps around your ear. You can open it up. Oh, cool. Yeah, that 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 thing is the actual headphone. Oh, it's like I see one that. Thing. It's like a Bluetooth. Oh, that that's you would neat. Just, uh, yeah, they would just put on one side and they could tune right. into the channel. Fans had to, to pay what twenty five or thirty five dollars. Yeah, I think it was twenty five dollars. Uh, so this to get is in. where your money goes. Yeah, to buy these. Yeah, in the bag and so on, and then of course the access to get to watch as media types work. I went up and I mingled with some of the fans, and they seemed to like it. They seem to be uh, happy with, you know, what they paid for. Sure, yeah. So they had some signs. Uh, one, one fan said, I want to get gronked. And I wasn't sure what that meant. And I asked her. I said, what does that mean? <laughs> when I she goes, well, if you have to ask, then you can't afford it. I wasn't sure <laughs> what that meant either. And I said, I, I, something tells me that if I get gronked, I might need a tetanus shot the next day or something. <laughs> but I'm not sure. She never explained it to Let's me. See. But uh, they were fans. They're already promoting that. next year's Super Bowl. Super Bowl 50, San Francisco. Levi Stadium. Wow. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it was it was fun today. I, I'll tell you, it was interesting to to, to hear what, what some of the guys said, what the fans thought, and yeah, you know, like I said last time it was here in 2008, they had it at University of Phoenix Stadium, so it was a lot more spread out and uh, wasn't as crowded. But uh, oh yeah, this is another thing here where fans can now purchase the media day uniform that the players had on. So this is like the fleece that the players were wearing uh, during their interviews. And I guess now you can go and, and purchase it and do your best, uh, you know, Tom Brady impersonation while you wear that. So, kind of cool. What, 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 Tom Brady was there, obviously. Yes, he was there. What was he saying? Um, he was saying all the right things. He was being, you know, real politically correct. And, uh, you know, they were trying to ask him about the flake gate and all did that they, kind of stuff. How did it 
How did everything go down? Well, yesterday, they both him and uh, their head coach, Bill Belichick, kind of let it be known that they, they're focused on Seattle. They're just going to talk about the game. And, of course, the owner, Robert Krauts, came out, and he kind of defended himself, the team, the coach, his quarterback and stuff. So they kind of put that thing to bed and wanted to focus on, on the game. So it was it was kind of interesting to hear what all these different guys said. And it was, you know, I mean, it was like I had my ADD in full effect because there was so many different audios going on. You had the crowd murmur, then you had right. speakers with each guy. So if you want by one speaker, you could hear, you know, Cam Chester talking, then you keep walking and you hear Russell Wilson talking. You're like, oh, wh wh where are they at? And so it was really, really interesting to see uh, the, the madness that was uh, Super Bowl Media Day. So what was the most interesting thing you heard or saw? Well, I, I gotta say, Marshawn Lynch just repeating oh. <laughs> the same thing over and over and over and then walking off. And then the, the barrel boy was pretty interesting. I was just watching that guy and you know, he's in the barrel like the whole day. And it was like an hour for just walking around and he was doing interviews and and then uh you know the fans were pretty cool to see you know they were they were cheering you know when the fans came out and they're like watching the players were filming also they were doing their own they were taking selfies and stuff and so it was really really cool really oh, cool. interesting well i know a lot of our reporters uh were out there a lot of people have been around town just kind of posting pictures on twitter on instagram um of, you know of the super bowl i actually wanted to pull up our tag board I can pull that up right there so what's interesting is that these are just like rotating pictures all you know submitted by different members of our team <laughs> he, that photo in the corner yeah. right here uh -huh. courtesy of Mia Garcia that's media day isn't it that's it right that's there it the there's corner, one of the purple uh -huh. and then Troy's photo right, right. here that's another one right there Troy doing a taking a selfie so uh yeah I mean it was uh absolute madness out there and we have of course had Quadruple team coverage. I was out there. Mia Garcia, as you mentioned, Troy, uh, Jula Cava was out there. So this so all, this, all that's just, just yeah, that shot immediate. right there is just outside trying to get in. Wow. And so yeah, so that all took place in US Area Center. Yeah, right. right. And, and the whole the thing that really made it a different dynamic was like I mentioned the fans. And then every once in a while, the NFL Network would bring out guys like Kurt Warner, who would come out and do an interview with Danian Tomlinson, Michael Irvin. Um, so yeah, they were all out there. Deion Sanders. Uh, I didn't get to talk to him. I kind of wanted to talk to him, but he kind of stayed in the back, and uh, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to see. That's, I love that sign. That yes, Super, Super Bowl Forty Nine sign. Yeah, yeah, I tried to take one, but I didn't have as good of a view. Yeah. Just like walking <laughs> by when I was picking up lunch, I was like, oh, that yeah. looks really cool. <laughs> I wanted to post it on Instagram. Yeah, that's what we did because of the traffic and so many fans. We just walked to the U.S. Airways Center from here. We were like, and why even go and walk try anyways. to park? Yeah, exactly. Let's see. Super Bowl for the people who paid and can't see up close at Media Day. Yeah, there you go. See, and that's the COS is channel two, three, four, and that's where you would have the earpiece if you were the fan. You're like, okay, I want to hear what Gary Blunt's talking about. So you tune in to channel six, and then you could hear what he was talking about. Right. And of course, there's Kurt Warner, uh, former Arizona Cardinal quarterback, Super Bowl MVP. He's mm -hmm. no stranger to this environment. So he was there doing some reports for the NFL Network, and he actually talked to our Jude LaCava, and you'll be able to hear that interview later on today. Okay. Who yeah. else did you talk to? Um, we talked to uh, Rob Gronkowski, who's the tight end for the New England Patriots, who also went to the University of Arizona. And uh, so it was, he was talking about it was nice to be back, and he really loved Arizona because he's not from here. He didn't play his high school ball here. So he talked about the fond memories he had when he played for the Arizona Wildcats and what it was like to be back, and he was really excited about that. Cool. So a lot of these interviews will be on. Yeah, they'll be on tonight at 5, 6, 9, and 10. We'll have plenty of stuff, and uh, we'll have all kinds of stuff from the Marshawn Lynch to the fans to Kurt Warner, you name it, we've got it for you. Okay. Well, I want to see check out more of these images real quick, just kind yeah. of live vicariously yeah. through all you guys that got to go. I was like, I was basically just like a passerby walking by yeah. in downtown, like, oh, look, look at all the fancy Super Bowl things. Yes. Yeah, see, those are some of the fans that were there. Uh, I, I don't think you can see any of them wearing the earpieces in that particular shot, but it was pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. There's Troy right there. You see, that's right in front of Tom Brady's booth, so, you know, people would crowd themselves up there and just wait for him to show up and then, of course, start firing in questions as soon as he sat down. Mm hmm And that's the the wide shot from up you know up in the stands. So mm -hmm. it's a good shot. 
um, by Mia right there. You can see, and I think that's before the fans, I guess that must be right when the fans start trickling in because once they got in there, it was packed and they even had like a like a media day host. They had some, uh, LeVar Arrington who used to play in the NFL for the Washington Redskins, he was there kind of talking to the crowd, letting you, people know, okay, in about five minutes, the Patriots will come out. And the fans will be like, you know, and then when you're like, right before the Seahawks come out, you're like, here they come, you're Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, everybody and anybody shows up there. It's really, really But they're not even, she's not a football player. <laughs> I don't think he Ice even... skaters, the Terminator, and a reporter who says he's covering. That's some good stuff. And like, yeah, that was, that was it, the line just to get in. I mean, it was. And this is video that Jill took yesterday. She was uh, at the NFL experience. Yeah, and that's the thing is uh, football in heels, um, that's, I, you know, I commend her for that because uh, you can do a lot of walking. If you go there, don't wear heels because <laughs> it's like <laughs> three or four different levels and it's an interactive games and it's right. like, so there's a lot of stuff to do it's, it's really they had a food court there they have like almost like a museum you can buy replica rings and that's going down at the convention center yeah yeah right? which and that's 25 dollars to get into 28 dollars yeah. something like that yeah or you can just use your media credential and then you should get in i don't have a super bowl media credential oh, i just have okay. this yeah, I don't know if that's going to work, but you never work. know. <laughs> I guess I won't have a Super Bowl yeah. experience. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to Jude to see if we can uh, <laughs> set you up. <laughs> I mean, it's my first time. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so what else do you have on tap for this week? Well, of course, Tiger Woods is over at the Waste Management Open. So there's a lot going on right here in the, in the you know local area. So this is it. The whole world's going to be watching. And, of course, tomorrow we'll be out on Media Row, uh, also downtown uh, by the convention center. So all kinds of different stories and, you know, all kinds of different angles will pop up throughout the week. And, you know, of course, today will be all about Media Day. Right. Well, thanks for the update, Richard. Welcome. I don't think you're getting any time off this week. No, no. <laughs> but at least you're enjoying the exactly. week. Exactly. And I don't want any time off right now now so it's a good time to be yeah, working yeah uh, so i'll let you keep the chips and i'm gonna take really? the body spray to, okay the chips are yours though thank so you you earned it wait no but your bag oh yeah you want to keep your bag yes. where did the uh, chips go did i give you back I the know. chips did you put them back in the bag maybe i did oh you did uh-oh yeah let's give them back i got special super bowl chips there you go. <laughs> <laughs> thanks richard and now the seat will be filled with another man who snuck into media day well really yes. didn't need to sneak in I don't John know, you we were showing people some of your images uh, just now. Oh, good, good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah? Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Tell, good. Before we get into like, your fun story, what? This is. Richard gave it to me. It was from the Media okay. Day bag. Uh, excellent. I didn't get a Media Day bag. I kind of just rolled in there and crashed their party. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, really? pretty much. What were you there for? Just hanging out? Uh, I was there, actually, to um, interview Julian Edelman, number 11 for the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Julian went to my high school in California, mm -hmm. Woodside High School. And we shared, um, in particular, one football coach, Larry Owens, who ended up going on to junior college and coaching Julian in junior college at College and, of San Mateo. And that's who you had as your high school coach. That's right. He was one of he was one of my high school coaches. So um, I wanted to talk to Julian because we share. You know, we went to the same high school, share some of the same coaches, and grew up in the same area. Right. And. Um, you know, I'm really proud of him. He's he's uh, he's a great great guy, and he's worked extremely hard. Does that mean you're going for the Patriots? I want to see Julian have a big game. Yeah, <laughs> okay. As a Woodside Wildcat. I want to see him have a big game. So that I mean, if the Cardinals he's aren't in it, you might as well go for some other connection. Well, right? yeah. I mean, I mean, and this is you know there is kind of a connection there, and and he um, you know he worked so hard to get to the NFL. Right. He was a guy who was not highly recruited out of high school. He wasn't. He wasn't highly recruited out of, uh, even from junior college to, to um, larger Division One programs. Kent State was really the one that, that took a flyer on him and really wanted him. Um, he's very talented, and he ends up in the NFL. It's just amazing. How long has he been playing? I think since 09, I think is when he got out. Mm -hmm. um, so right around there, 08, 09, something like that. Okay. Well... So, Sounds like you had a fun day. Look for number 11, yeah. Well, Julian Edelman. 11 is one of my favorite numbers. There you go. Mm -hmm. so, there you go. So, what else are we going to chat about? We're going to talk about, it looks like I saw some video of you. Oh, having yeah. Some fun yeah, yeah, yeah. Out yesterday. With the Black Hawk helicopter. Yeah. With um, Customs and Border Protection. That's really cool. Do you have that video? I have some video. That oh, I great. Can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's show that. That's let's cool. Let's see. Um, this is us. And um, 
it was really, really fun to That's go up with those GoPro, guys. That's from your GoPro, right? Uh, I think it is, yeah. It's either John Netzel's shot or my GoPro. That's John Netzel. Oh. Much better photography. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to show some people some of the videos. You know, now, you guys right took. there, that shot, that's what you were dealing with in Glendale when this thing was built, the stadium. Uh -huh. I mean, it was mile after mile of cotton and alfalfa fields. And, and then they build the stadium out there, and it's all kind of coming together out there. It's been slow, it's not been easy. But really, what we were doing was showing. Um, the Black Hawk is part of the arsenal that's up trying to protect the airspace at 30 mile, um, effectively a no-fly zone around the stadium. Mm -hmm. So aircraft are not supposed to venture in 30 miles unless they're commercial or an air ambulance or they have a reason to be there. And then within a 10 mile limit, it's really locked down. Mm -hmm. If somebody penetrates that 10 mile limit, then they're looking at potentially scrambling F-16s and shooting them down. So that's, that's how serious they are about this stuff. Oh, wow. So you... Hopped in a hopped in, not a plane. Hopped in a helicopter, helicopter yeah. and just tagged along with them. Yeah, we flew with them while they went over the stadium and talked about talked to the pilot and the crew about what they're looking for and and what their what their mission is, which is really to identify aircraft and make sure that somebody who's in the airspace is in there by mistake, not because they mean harm for the Super Bowl. Sure. So that's what we were doing. When is that going to air? That's going to air tomorrow night. Okay. Nine o'clock. And that'll be your story. That'll be my story. That's what you were working on over there. That's what That's I'm basically on. why I asked John to come up here. I was like, what is that video that you're working on? What's yeah, that story? Yeah, yeah. And it looked it. really cool. I was yeah, like, want to hang cool. out with me and talk to me about sure. it? Sure. Why not? <laughs> well, I don't know. We were already talking Super Bowl, and this is somewhat <laughs> right. Super Bowl related. So did you watch Media Day today? Did I watch it? Did you watch it? No, any I've it? been working here. Okay, so you didn't have it streaming. Any of it streaming in here? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. Tell me. Well, it's, it's a mob scene. I mean, it's insane. Um, I, do you have some of the shots that I took up? Out there, I do. or any some of our shots uh, at Media Day. I mean, it's um, it's really theater of the absurd, and they're selling you know they're selling seats for this, which I I don't There's know. Yours. I guess people want to people want to take this in, but if you're not on the floor and you're not right there, I don't know. I don't know why it's that alluring, but at any rate, <laughs> let's see. What else? Yeah, I sent in a bunch early, so. You did? Yeah. With the hashtag? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch in there. There's Julian right there, actually. That's uh, who I interviewed today. That's Julian Edelman. Number 11. Yep, so you got a bunch there. Mm -hmm. I took oh, a wow. Bunch of those. That's all the media. So the picture we're looking at there's right now. There's more media than people, I think. What is that media? <laughs> Everybody's on the ground there. Can you, you got that? You got that picture, okay? So you see those little blue things? That's where every player sits. Those little purple kiosk things. Right here. Yeah, that's where all the players. Let they sit beneath in. that, and I think that was Tom Brady's right there, Oops. actually. See um, Oops. There you go. And you, I've got a few more pictures in there too. So each each player is under one of those. And it has a speaker on it, so you can hear what they're saying, because it's hard to hear in the, in the so noise of the place. So it's not even like, so all these 5,000 media members that attend, they're not all getting one-on-ones by any means. No, but, but if you hang long enough, you, you generally can, you can, can, get, can get some face time with these guys. Tougher with Brady, tougher with Belichick um, to get that. But, and even Julian was... Uh, it was pretty crowded. I mean, mm -hmm. he's become a key part of their offense as a receiver. And he returns punts, and he does all kinds of stuff. So sure. what's Jill up to in that picture? That's pretty oh, cool. Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, that's her from yesterday where okay. she's throwing a football at the NFL experience. I can share with our viewers in a second. <laughs> and the ball's properly inflated, I trust. Uh -huh. Not bad. Jill, very impressive. That's right there. So, yeah, it was neat. It was good going out there. Yeah. A little goes a long way. I, I was glad it was over. <laughs> How long were you up there for? I was out there for probably an hour and a half. I really wanted to get Julian Edelman, and that was that was my goal. So you went in without? No, I have my credential. No, no, no. I, I my knew credential. that you didn't. Sh I didn't. Know, I know you didn't sneak in, but I'm saying you didn't already have a pre-scheduled interview with him. Well, actually, our mutual friend, our coach, um, texted Messaging. him and said that I was going to be coming out to talk to him. So we talked about Woodside and That's so cool. Woodside High School and and his time in the Bay Area. And you know, he's a local kid. He grew up very close to where I grew up. So. We share a lot of the same experiences, and in fact, this same coach um, knew Tom Brady when Tom Brady was a little kid. He still calls him Tommy. 
<laughs> wow. He, he says he's kn- he's known him since he was eight years old. So because um, he's from the Bay as well. Yeah, exactly. Right. Tom Brady grew up probably about fifteen miles from me, and uh, Julian grew up maybe five six miles from me. So it's you know there's a we're all interconnected a little bit. And you're you were a football player. I learned that last week. Yeah. Not a good one, but... <laughs> good enough to play high got school. Got it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it was fun. It was really a great experience. That's cool. Great experience. Well, you know what's a, a side note? All A lot of the fans that are coming out for the Super Bowl coming straight from New England. Have you been watching the coverage yeah. of the snow out it's there? It's just incredible. It's, it's incredible. It's crazy. And I know we were talking about it earlier this morning. Just uh, uh, we were watching as a... Uh, Bill de Blasio came out and spoke and was speaking kind of optimistically right. from the city of New York because they only got, what, six to eight inches of snow. But in Boston? Yeah. Different matter. Yeah, it's uh, expected to hit like two feet or something. Wow. It's crazy. I think so are already some of the people of, not, not going to be able to make it out? Well, I think... Are they going to be delayed? I heard something that a lot of people had left Sunday and Monday. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone is leaving today or tomorrow. I think I saw a headline saying that flights were canceled through tomorrow. Wow. But, I mean... It's Thank God, the Super Bowl is Sunday. Right. So people still have time. I think there are obviously concerns. Maybe people who had a flight scheduled today or yesterday, maybe they have hotels already booked and prepaid. So, sure. I mean, they might be out some money, but yep. hopefully they'll be able to make hopefully it out there. Hopefully they'll make it. And they'll, this and is their team. They're going to hit some pretty decent weather now. I don't know about Friday, Saturday. That could get iffy again. Right. But today, tomorrow, uh, Thursday, the rest of today should be pretty decent. So, I don't know. I wonder what the weather's like here. I'm Are gonna, you going to check it? I'm going to check right now, although I feel like our map is a little off. Well, Cave Creek, it's 2,960 <laughs> degrees. That's really concerning. Yeah, so I probably won't share that map with our viewers because our map is not exactly up to date. And the last thing I want Fountain is Hills a screenshot. Is up too. I mean, I would show it to our viewers, but there's going to be one viewer out there that takes a screenshot, puts it on Reddit, and it's like, okay. oh, look at Fox 10. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah, God. We've got a few the weather's interesting uh, temperatures out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly why, but I can tell our viewers that it is 71 right now in Scottsdale, 73 in Sky Harbor, or uh, at Sky Harbor, 72 okay, out in Glendale. Okay, pretty nice. Well, it yeah, beats long, the heck out of uh, Boston. Right. So basically what we're trying to say is anyone who has made their way from New England to support the Patriots are enjoying the weather. <laughs> pretty <Right>. sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's funny, in 08, it was very cold here for the last Super Bowl. We mm-hmm. have not had really great Arizona weather like we normally have. It's been okay. You mean this? this, uh, Even this one, you know, you've had a little bit of rain. It hasn't been the typical, you know, blue sky through the whole thing. Like when's the last time it was like that? Ninety-six, we had some pretty good weather, but it was even (laughs) cold in ninety-six for that. So maybe the climate is just changing. That was something that yesterday I had Dave Muncy on, our weatherman, and he was telling, talking to me about climate change. Really? Yeah. I miss that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I mean. You're, you're saying not like we used to, but if the last time we had a great winter was 96, that was 20 years ago. Then well, I mean, just in this particular changing. week when we have the Super Bowl, for some reason, it doesn't cooperate very well. I mean, it's okay. I'm sure they think it's great from the East Coast. It's all but relative, right? It could be even better, yeah, as you know. Yeah, I didn't really like the rain yesterday. You didn't? Nah. Wow, you're becoming an Arizonan. No, I mean, I, first of all, it, being an Arizona in terms of weather is pretty much the same as being from Southern California. Anytime it rains, it's like, do I have to go to work? I mean, when I was at USC, a rain day meant a new, no school day. <laughs> not in officially. Your book. Not officially. In your book, it was it a was. voluntary no, right. no class that day. That was a Samia no no. It wasn't just uh, no me though. Day. It was most of the cl- most of the not most of the school, but a good amount of the school would skip classes when it was really rainy. We didn't know what to do. You just do. didn't want to deal with it. Walking to class. Yeah, in the too rain. much trouble. That's a lot of effort. We'll try New England on for size. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. I All right, so we got to- some good stories tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, We're, you're uh, going to. So the plan is you're going to be out in Glendale. I'm going to be in Glendale. Broadcasting right? live from there. Right. And so we're doing team coverage throughout the city for Super Bowl week. You're out in Glendale. Carrie is in Scottsdale, Troy's in Phoenix. Right, so yeah. all three of you guys, I will be checking in. I think I'll be able to check in with some of you guys. You better. Out in the field. Okay. I'd like to check in with you, but no promises. You can call me. Oh, because we'll we're on satellite. Order. You guys are on satellite, yeah, okay. but that anyone a that trickier. I have a live truck access to, we'll be, we'll be checking them out and okay, seeing what's cool. going on. But mean, t- you, people can watch you on oh, the yeah. live. Yeah. And the six. Right. And the nine. Right. And the ten. Probably. Except on the TV. Exactly. And everything that happens on TV is streamed on fox10phoenix.com anyways. Nice plug. So, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, even if you aren't on news now, you'll still, our internet viewers will still be able sure. to see you during your regularly scheduled broadcast. Exactly. There you go. We still do those. 
regular It's not all happening here. I know you think it is, but it's not. Maybe we should trade spots for a day. <laughs> okay, Let's cool. see if I can just do a full news. I don't think I can do this. There. This looks like Mission Control. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if you press the button, this whole thing could shut down. Man. Be destroyed. It's very scary what they're asking you to do. You what only have two hands. I mean, come on. I know. Two hands, five screens, multiple mics, lots of buttons. Yep. It's a fun You're little... the boss of your world over here. It's pretty cool. <sighs> it's a lot of pressure. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so... That was a, I mean, that's pretty much what we have on tap today. There was this other story. It's a news story, and it upsets me greatly. And I may, might as well bring it up now that I brought it up. Go ahead. The QT shooting, or the QT, the quick. T uh, uh, You're talking about the young man. Yeah, the quick trip. A few days ago. Who was shot? And killed. Well, there's new headlines coming out. Uh, I just was reading an Associated Press article um, about the suspect, the one who shot and mm -hmm. killed. Uh, the clerk, he was awaiting uh, deportation. Do you know this? No, I didn't. Yeah, this just came out. And it's like, it's one of those things where, let me actually pull up the story right now because it just came out and I was like, oh. So we're going to venture into an immigration debate <laughs> I guess, Yeah, basically. It was just. Thank you for pulling me into that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, well, because now it's, it's being pulled on the national wires too, not just uh, locally here. Well, what is what is so upsetting about that is that it's really sad. He was doing his job and complying and doing what this guy wanted. It wasn't a robbery. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't moving quickly enough, and the guy pulls a gun on him and shoots him. It's really... And he's a really good kid. Uh, it's just... It's incredible. It's really sad. I need to find this story because I was just reading it, and then uh, I lost it. But I think it's somewhere here. So maybe he didn't... Uh, is that it? No, that's something else. Um, I'll find it. Stand by. Hmm. You're going old school on me here. What's that? <laughs> <coughs> Pulling up the wires. I know. I have to. I, it was just because I don't want to. I just read this, and I. I it. Mm, okay. When did I come on the air? At three something, and I read it in around two. Not on the Arizona Wire? I didn't. No, you got me on this because I did not know this. Yeah, I no, it's something that, that like that really was, was on my mind and I was really upset about it. And so just because then I started, I Googled the victim, started looking at selfies of him and I got really emotionally attached to the victim in the last hour. Well, we interviewed um, some friends of his last week, I right. believe. And, um, People love this kid. Yeah, I mean, he looked so nice and friendly, and it's really upsetting me that... Well, it's not as if it were a robbery and he resisted or he was giving the guy trouble. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just don't understand it, and we may never understand some of this. Why can't I find this right now? It's really upsetting me, because I was just reading it here on the wires. Well, when you find it, we'll talk about it. No, I want to find it now. It was open. <laughs> the thing is, it was open, but you know how we have a system, and you know, if you haven't. Are you sure we have a system? No, we have a system called <laughs> iNews for I'm, our viewers. I'm having my day. doubts right now. No, we, and you know, if you aren't on iNews for a certain period of time, it closes oh, yeah, on itself. Right. So no, it happens to me I all had time. this story pulled up, and it has now disappeared, and I thought I was good at searching iNews, but clearly. I would think it'd be on the Arizona Wire. It's really upsetting me. I may not be able to help you on this one. I know, and I would hope that one of my bosses <laughs> watching this right now might be able to help. But um, did we get to the bottom of Tiger Woods' tooth, by the way, today? Uh, we did. We did. It was knocked out. It was by a cameraman. Yeah, that's so. What that was Ron, not made up. That was true. Ron was telling me about that this morning. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna do a Google search because. Uh, here we go. All right, it's going to be from a source. An unnamed source. An unnamed source that I'm not going man to... Man accused of gunning down a Mesa convenience store clerk over a pack of cigarettes was facing deportation proceedings but had been released from federal custody on bond. Yeah, so that was the story. I was just this like... This is going to be a big story. Exactly, and that's why I knew it was on the National Wire. So it's like, oh, our story here locally was just picked up nationally. That's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, he was released on bond. Right. 
And so the article that I was reading earlier well, from the Associated again, Press uh, Wire was talking about how critics are obviously, you know, using this as an example now to, uh, you know, well, argue no against doubt. President Obama's. Uh, you know, and if a judge did executive this, order. that may not. But there's no doubt that that the administration has yeah. has said, if they don't believe you're dangerous, they don't want you help. If you're not a danger to the community, they don't want they but don't this, want you being detained. This man, and indiv- this man w- was a danger to the community, though. He had robbery charges. I think he had threatened to kill someone. Right here, someone else had said. This uh, may one be, woman said that she in was all in honesty, fear of her more life. Of a judge problem than a um, threatened Obama to kill problem. her. Plenty of hot t- right. So the anyway. judge may have blown it here, and obviously did. So here's the, the latest order was served on this suspect. His name, uh, Apolinar Altamirano, um, on January 19th. Three days later, was the sh- uh, he's accused of first. Well, and again, murder. critics will use this and say um, this is evidence that these people who are being released are not um, are not just good citizens. That some of these folks pose a danger to the, the community, and that's what the, the detractors well, that, are going to say. And that's the thing you have to figure out. About the relaxing of the rules. They're going to say, look, you know, you don't know exactly who you have sometimes. And and the other argument has been, you could release someone who you don't have a record on, but they might have an extensive record in Mexico that we don't know about. Right. And how do you cross? I mean, how do you even do that? Cause it, so, and they're, you know, people are operating under false names and all kinds of stuff. So sure. it's not as benign necessarily as we've been led to believe. Some of these folks are dangerous. Let's be honest in any population. I don't care who it is. Right. Um, you're going to have some dangerous folks. So what you want to make sure is if you're going to relax the policy, make sure that the people you're releasing are not going to go out and create mayhem. Um, and in this case, killing a young man over a pack of cigarettes. I know, it's so sad. Grant Ronnebeck, quick trip clerk, 21 years old. I know. I'm going to pull this so. picture up. This is, this is basically, I'm just redoing what I did. Uh, That's him, right there. You had it. Yeah, I'm going to pull that up for our viewers. So this is just me doing a Google search. I know this one was from our station. It's just that. And the sad. suspect is right here. Right. It's sad. I don't know. Well, it's unnecessary uh, as well. Right. Uh, this is again, a, you know, um, obviously a dangerous guy who We'll, we'll find out. Should he have been released? We're, we're going we're gonna to find out. Well, at out. this point, he's not going to be released now. At this point, I mean, you are a murder suspect. You're not right. going anywhere. Gonna, you're in custody. This is that. Right. So now it's, I mean, in this scenario, I mean, you're not getting deported now. You have to face our criminal justice system because you killed a citizen. Is that what happens? Or? Well, yeah. Yeah. He'll be so here he's not. charges here. He doesn't. Right. He's he doesn't, not leaving. No, no deportation for him at He's this point. probably just being sentenced and ending up in one of our prisons. Could be. Could very Most well likely. Be. Very well be. Mm-hmm. What's the alternative? That's pretty much it, unless he's cleared in the trial. Or there's... Um, but there's evidence, there's surveillance. I mean, there's... Yeah, I mean, it's... And we're calling him a suspect because that's the legal way to ref- refer to him. But in this scenario, it's someone that, you know, was seen... And it may commi- be pled down. It may be pled down from, you know, the murder charge may be pled down. There may be some extenuating circumstances we don't know about. So we'll have to find out. We'll, we'll learn that at trial. I don't know. This story upsets me. That's I get all. it. I get it. It will upset a lot of people. That's all I wanted to bring up. Okay. I know we were talking about such positive, pleasant things. And I was like, we should end our newscast on a. Sad well, note. you got to talk about what you think is important in this. this I think this is really you. important I'm sure because if it was just. If we put this up on Facebook, there's going to be strong reaction. To yeah, it. absolutely. It's very. Um, someone just whoa, whoa, someone just turned off our lights. <laughs> Christine? I guess they just want us to get off the air. So I will just wrap <laughs> You're up. You're going to bid adieu? Well, I mean, that was that was kind of it. I mean, it was just going to be Is like, Is this oh. our picture right now? Yeah, it we just lost It actually looks okay them. without all that light. I mean, they can still see us. It'll be interesting to see it from a viewer perspective, why our lights weren't dimmed. But I guess I'll take that as a cue to wrap, wrap up. There we yeah. go. Oh, wow. Someone, a, a loving viewer who works here. Just turn on the lights for us. Very kind, very considerate. Thank you, Jeff. Um, but you know what? There, that's pretty much my show in terms of what was on my list for the day. Anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm in the just. News? I'm, I'm kind of looking forward. I'm curious about the Super Bowl because yeah. it's, it's um, you know, it's a 
very evenly matched teams. And, right. And it could be a very, very entertaining game. Do you think people will be focusing more on the game or on the controversy behind the game? Uh, once the game starts, it'll be on the game. <laughs> Like deflate what? I yeah, don't know. exactly. Right. It'll all be about the Look game. Look who I see. Jude, Jude Look Kava. Kava. Make an appearance. Jude, right what's here. the word, buddy? News now. What did you think out there today? Uh, it is a mob scene that's like a combination of a bat circus, Woodstock, <laughs> and a bunch of whack jobs. <laughs> okay. That's my definition. Yeah, I saw Jude media. out there. He was working it. And, you know, there was a media member dressed up as Robin. Robin, like from Batman, like Batman and Robin? Batman and Robin. I think it was. What know, outlet was that? Or something. Yeah, it was, it was like an old version of like the <laughs> Adam West show. But no, for the most part, it was. Uh, well, you saw it. You I did. saw it first time. What did well, you think? Well, here's the thing. Um, I think it's interesting to put it in an arena like that. What did, Do you like that? It's, it's trying to work with about eight people in one phone booth. Yeah. Um, it's what tough. Was it it's like? pretty crowded. It's better in a stadium where you've got more room. Yeah, mm. you need a little more space. Um, so they should have had it out in Glendale. Fun. It's you a think? circus. I mean, it's really tough to get anything of uh, valuable content, but it's entertaining to just take. Mm. You've seen the tweets and the photos. Right. What did you think about the crowd there? I told Sami I didn't think that it was as full as I. I had been told it was sold out. There were a lot, there were a lot of seats, seats I saw. Yeah. The upper bowl was was very empty, um, and there were a number of fans. They're probably bigger than last year in New York. Really? But, yeah, but I, I thought we didn't see as much of the enter. I didn't see people there from the Howard Stern show. I didn't see a lot of the. Uh, Is the, the NFL keeping them out? I, I think you're going to see more of that on Radio Row the next okay. few days. But I, I thought that the access was pretty good. I thought the Patriots were very open about some of the tough questions. Seattle. How did um, Belichick handle? Uh, he tried to actually show gate. personality. Oh, really? Which was amazing. He actually. Tried what do you to, say? He. Uh, what some, do you do? Some person was there with a puppet, a hand puppet trying to Talk interview to Coach Belichick, <laughs> and, he, and he actually smiled. You know, there's an over and under. Oh, there's an over and under. There's one of the, uh, the prop bets in Vegas. Will Bill Belichick smile at any time during the Super Bowl game, the actual oh, game? Oh, the game. And you I, know, I by the know way, they're taking happen. bets on whether Katie, what Katy Perry's hair color is going to be. Yeah. And I'm thinking if she's got a good friend out there, she could, she could just call him and say, Orange. Yeah, well, what if she goes orange, blue, and purple or something like that? I mean, what she you, could. She's done rainbow like, before. Like, you have to play black and red. <laughs> Why are there but bets I mean, on you, everything? You're going to take a bet on that it's when she could tell a friend or tip a friend yeah, off and they want to lay a... It's uh, an action on that. Exactly. You know, I don't know about that. Only her hairdresser knows for sure. And if I knew, I'd be putting some big money <laughs> I mean, on it. You, you saw it firsthand. It was, it was kind of wild and crazy. It was. Fun. And some great pictures. Uh, it's I great thought, to see. I, I saw Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski. Yeah, I saw a picture of them. You pulled them up, yeah. Why were they there? That's a see. That's a question I think about ninety percent of the media should ask themselves. <laughs> because what was interesting is that if they were there, <laughs> I need to put you in this no, chair, no, buddy. No, they were I'm there. On my way to they were de- they're doing interviews, but they were being interviewed because they were. The, I'm confused. It's like the media interviewing the media the... and the media again. I mean, yeah, so I why were they out, there? there Who did you? Five hundred members of the media per player. 5,000 credentialed media. I don't think it was 5,000. Maybe about 3,500. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. What, who did who did you enjoy talking to today? I really enjoyed uh, talking with O'Brien Schofield. He used to play for the Cardinals. He was waived. That's right. And now he's going for his second Super Bowl. Unbelievable. Ring. So it's kind of a, a – and, and to see, you know, a lot of interesting stories. Josh Klein, Julian Edelman from Kent Julian. State. Julian. Played with a buddy of mine's son, Michael Fay, who was a guard on that team. Josh Klein. There's two guys from Kent State on that team, Klein and Edelman. Yeah. What a great story that is. Exactly. And Edelman's I, I, unbelievable. I, I actually tower over Julian Edelman, and I'm like 5'11". He's got to be like 5'9", maybe. Yeah. You just, what a talent. Yeah, I ta- we talked about it because he went to my high school. And um, first time in Woodside High School history that they won the Central Coast section. We got there a bunch of times, but we, we didn't win it. He got the team there, and they won the whole thing. They went undefeated, and then he gets no offers. No offers. And ends up playing for for College of San Mateo. How did he react to you being one of the? He knew I was coming home? because our coach uh, called cool, him and texted man. him and <laughs> said John Hook's coming over. That's pretty And cool. he reached out and shook my hand. He said he's sports. expecting That's me, really so it was right. fun. It was fun. A lot of fun. fun. It, it, very entertaining. He's a good. He's a good guy. It's going to be even more outrageous with Radio Row because I think then you see the the morphing of entertainment, celebrities, comedians, and the NFL, and that'll really kick off the next couple of days starting tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who do you like in the game, Jude? What game? <laughs> no, I say that because it's like the last it thing we talk really about is the game. Exactly. Game. I, you know, I'm going back and forth a close competitive game, but I'm, I'm looking at a slight edge now to New England 
And, and I, that's I, what the line reflects yeah, in uh, I, Vegas. And I say that because of what Green Bay did to Seattle defensively. I agree. For, for three quarters I agree. In, in ten minutes. And yep. so I, I would favor, you know, Belichick has a chance to stick it to everybody and win the game and say, I don't care if the, what kind of PSI was in the football, um, let's win and go home. You still got to throw that ball yes. anyway. Yes. So, you know, taking some air out of the football isn't that it's big of an advantage. It's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. It's not that big of an advantage. I think the advantage. story behind the story and the anti-Belichick and the dislike for Belichick by sure. other organizations is, is a real story. Um, and I also think the friendship connection of the commissioner to some of these powerful owners like Bob Kraft is also, you know, wh why did he go so light on the Ray Rice initial suspension? He wanted to protect the owners. Why did he go so light on Spygate? He wanted to protect, you know, there, there's definitely, even Paul Tagliabue came out with a very uh, that's right. he was very article saying, hey, you know, sharp you, criticism. You, you cannot be just about the money. You need to protect the integrity of the game. Yep. I'll let you guys go back. All right, <laughs> All right. And we're Thanks out there. Jude and I are in Glendale the over the You're next uh, few days. Yes. I'm going to roll, too, All right. Samia. Bye, guys. Good stuff. I guess I'll say bye to everyone because okay. everyone's leaving me now. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm alone. No Joe and Huck here. Solo. Thankfully, John stood up for all the stories I wanted to talk about. Thanks so much for watching us. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. That's YouTube.com slash Fox10Phoenix. That way you'll watch or you'll be able to watch all of the breaking Fox 10 News Now updates as they happen, when they happen. I'm Samia Khan. Thanks for watching.